Hi, my name is Becky McNeil, and I'm an artist here in Corning. Are you familiar with the author Beatrix Potter? She wrote The Tale of Peter Rabbit, and this book, The Tale of Timmy Tippitoes, it was my daughter's favorite when she was little. I bet a lot of you have heard of Beatrix Potter, but did you know that she was also an artist and a scientist? That's right. Beatrix Potter was a painter. She painted beautiful landscapes of the area around her home, but she was also a naturalist. She made her own nature journals out of things she had around in the house. And then she took those out into the area around her house and she observed the world around her. She recorded what she saw through paintings and drawings in her nature journal with pictures that looked like this. She might draw the caterpillars, or the fungi like these mushrooms. Her drawings of fungi are still used to help scientists classify the things that they see in nature. Then Beatrix Potter would draw the animals and plants that she saw and she would use those to help spark her imagination to create the characters and the settings in her books. So that's how her science and her art helped her create her books. Today, we're going to use some simple materials to make our own nature journals, just like Beatrix Potter did. So let's get started. In your kit, you have some paper and a paper bag, as well as a needle, a safety pen, and some thread. The first thing you're going to need to do is to cut off the front panel of your paper bag. I've already done this to save us some time on our video. So that we have just one sheet of brown paper. We're going to use a piece of our white paper to trace to make a cover for our nature journal. Lay a piece of white paper on your brown paper bag and you can use any writing utensil, a pencil, a pen, a crayon. I'm gonna use a marker so you can see what I'm doing. And you're just going to trace around the outside edge of one piece of paper. When you've done this, you'll know that your outside cover will fit the pages of your journal. Once you've traced all four sides, you can use a pair of scissors to carefully cut around the line that you've drawn. You may need an adult's help if your scissors are sharp. Be sure to cut carefully so that you don't cut your fingers. sheets of paper and fold those in half individually also. I know it seems like it would be faster to fold the whole stack at the same time, but it does make your paper slip and then your fold isn't quite as even. For the next step, we're going to be using some sharp objects. So if you need an adult's help, now's the time to ask for it. So I have five sheets of paper and a cover. I want to stack them all inside of each other. Make 
so they're lined up nice and even. So you can see how my journal's already taking shape. Here you have a choice. You're going to need to poke holes along the spine or the folded edge of your journal. You can do that with the pen before you start the sewing process, or you can go straight to the needle and sew. I think it's a little bit easier to poke the holes with the pen, so I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to open up all the layers of my journal, and I want to make sure that the fold line is lined up when I poke my holes. Turn this around so you can see. I'm going to be poking five holes, one right in the middle, and then two on either side of that hole in the middle. It's pretty easy to use this large pen to poke the holes, but you do want to be careful that you're poking just the paper and not your fingers also. So I'm going to start with the hole in the middle. I'm going to poke through the brown paper. Notice how I'm holding up, putting the pen down, and then I'm actually pulling on the paper to poke the hole. I'm not pushing the pen at all. Once I poke through the brown paper, I'll line it up on the white paper, making sure I'm also on the fold line below. And I'll grab that stack of white paper and I'm pulling up on the paper, not pushing in the pen to make it go through. So I have my first hole poked. I'm gonna move over. For me, it's about two fingers. If you have smaller fingers, it might be about three. But for me, it's about two fingers. Put my pen down on the fold line of the brown paper, pull the brown paper up, to poke that hole, then line it up, make sure that I'm on the fold line of the white papers, and pull those papers up to poke that next hole. Again, moving over about two fingers width, poking the hole through the brown papers, lining up on the fold lines of the white papers, and poking one more hole. Then I'm going to do the same thing to put two holes on this side. So that I have five holes total. And they aren't perfectly spaced and that's okay. But we do want one in the middle, two on each side. Safest way to store your pen then is to go ahead and close it up so that the sharp point is hidden away. For the next step of our process, we're going to be sewing our book together. This is a book binding technique. You have a piece of pretty heavy thread. This is actually upholstery thread that's used to sew furniture. We're going to be using it to sew a book together. And you have a large needle with a big hole in it. That's the eye of the needle. You're going to thread your needle by putting the end of the thread through the eye or the hole in the needle. And you're going to pull the thread through until you have about a third of the thread has gone through so that you have a long tail. When we get ready to sew our hook together, we're going to follow this diagram. starting from the inside of our book and sewing up from the middle. I'm going to go from the inside up through the middle hole with my needle. When I pull my needle through, I want to leave a tail hanging out in the middle of my book. I have plenty of thread so I can leave a pretty decent long tail just so that I have plenty to work with later when I need to tie my knot. We're following that diagram, so that was step one. Step two, I'm on the outside of my book now and I'm going to go into the hole next to that. Hitting the holes in the pages. Hold on to that thread tail here because it's going to want to pull all the way through. I'm going to get my 
nice and tight. And now for step three, so in our diagram, the solid lines happen on the outside of the book, the dotted lines happen on the inside of the book. So I've come up through the middle, now I'm on the, I've done step two on the outside, now I'm doing step three on the inside. So I'm going to move over to the next hole on the outside edge, going up through the paper, and then the cover. Sometimes your pages twist and that's okay. Just make sure that you grab that starter thread again and line everything back up. And that everything is pulled tight. Once you get these first few stitches in, things will stop shifting them quite so much. So I've done step three. I'm now on this outside hold. Step four is on the outside of the book and it's coming back toward the middle. And I'm gonna go into this hole that I've already been in. the needle in through the middle of the book. Step five is on the inside of the book and it's gonna come up through the center hole. Now with step six, we're shifting over to the other side of the book. Step six is on the outside of the book and it just goes into the very next hole over. It's the first time I've been in this hole, so I do wanna peek and make sure that I'm hitting the hole from the cover and the pages. There you go. Step seven goes on the inside of the book to the outside hole. finished with together and we're going to tie a knot. The way I like to tie this knot is cross the two strings over each other, wrap them together once and then twice. That's going to give you a little bit more grip to hold this knot in place. I like to wiggle the knot over right on top of that first hole in the middle. Hold that tight and then we're going to tie another knot right on top. just so that my thread, my knot doesn't come in time. So we're gonna freeze my book and there's my nature journal. I'm all set to go outside and do some observations. Now that your nature journal is finished, find some markers, crayons, colored pencils, or watercolors, whatever you might have and take them outside to do some observations. Whether you see plants or animals, rocks or clouds, record them in your nature journal, just like Beatrix Potter did. You never know what might spark your imagination. <laughs>